Hey everybody, welcome to 2022. It's so good to see you guys here and thank you so much for joining me. You are watching uh, the Quilted Joy Clubhouse. It is January 2022. I hope that you had a wonderful holiday and I hope that you were able to relax a little bit. Um, Kelsey told me she was able to be a slug for a while. It's always good to be a slug for a little while and not be on the go, go, go. I know that can happen during the holidays because you're trying to get everything uh, ready, get everything going. This year, I decided for the first time ever, I was going to make um, deviled eggs for my Christmas family gathering. And I will never do that ever again. Like, I always thought, okay, so, so here's a little bit about me. I always thought when I saw deviled eggs that, yeah, they're a little smelly to cook, but whenever I saw them, I thought, oh, you know, isn't that nice? Like, they just kind of whipped it together. And then for the first time ever, I actually made deviled eggs. There's so much work involved in deviled eggs. And so, and they looked like they had walked over to my aunt's house. Like, they looked awful. Just trying to get the shell off was an ordeal. So, um, so yeah, deviled eggs, not for me. I'll eat them, but yeah, I'm not going to make them ever, ever, ever again. Um, and then I decided to make, um, roasted, uh, chickpeas, um, some spiced roasted chickpeas and they were like eating, uh, pebbles. I thought, I thought that, you know, you could easily break a tooth on them. So wound up uh, not doing that either. So I had all these big like culinary plans for the holidays. Totally didn't work out at all. So I don't recommend um, roasted chickpeas. At least maybe I overcook them or something. I thought it would be a great idea. Um, but uh, anyway, over there in the chat, tell me what your favorite holiday dish was. That you either made or you consumed um, uh, over the holidays. Because maybe I'll have a new favorite. I keep thinking I should have like a signature dish, dish that I bring to my, my family gatherings. My favorite is roasted beets, but nobody else eats them but me and my kids, um, which is okay, but uh, I, I still would like to have some kind of like, ooh, Angela brought her special, and I can tell you it's not Angela brought her special, you know, devil eggs. No, my whole family was like, what happened to your eggs? Because they, they look awful. So pop over there in the chat and tell me um, what city you're watching from and tell me um, what your signature dish is for your holiday gatherings and maybe I'll get some ideas of my own. Um, so I, we should have some people filing in. We actually, by the way, you can watch this um, on our website. You can watch this on our YouTube channel, on the Quilted Joy YouTube channel, and you can watch it on the Quilted Joy Clubhouse there in Facebook, as well as on our Quilted Joy Facebook page. So we're in all kinds of places. So if you are um, a YouTube kind of person, you can catch us there um, or any of your favorite social media channels. So um, do we have any uh, signature dishes that are rolling in there or folks who are saying where they're from, Brad? Uh, we've got corn casserole. Corn casserole. You know, that one's good because you can do it with frozen corn, right? You don't have to have it like off the cob and, and frozen corn's pretty cheap. That's a good one. What did you say? Canned corn. Canned corn is what you use it with? Okay, I'll have to check it out. Yeah, that does sound in like some cream and stuff. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds pretty good. New what a, a what? New Mexico. A New Mexico, I don't even know what that word was, Brad. Pozole. 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 Is that a, a corn dish? No. I think it's a sweet thing. A sweet thing. Pozole. Maybe. I don't remember. Oh, man. I, I've, not, I've not encountered a pozole before, but I will have to be on the lookout for them. Um, not something at my uh, Kentucky family gatherings, but I'll have to look for it. That's like I went to Texas and stayed with a friend of mine, and she introduced me to... Um, tamales and I had never had a tamale before and it, and so my impression is that tamales are kind of like macaroni and cheese like everybody has a, a, their own way of doing it and some ways are better than others um, and her way was quite good I must say it was very good anything else Brad Cream corn, anything with bacon. Although I thought one year I would get um, fresh uh, Brussels sprouts and wrap them with bacon and thought it was a good way to get my kids to eat Brussels sprouts, you know, because they would love bacon, so it was wrapped in bacon. And uh, my little Nicholas, he looked at it, he said, Mama, he said, that's a waste of perfectly good bacon. <laughs> and so he was not interested in bacon wrapped, um, bacon wrapped Brussels sprouts. Anything else, Brad? Oh, yeah? Oh, good. So oh, good. Calzones. Pork pie. Pork pie. I, I, would, I don't know pork pie. 
All right, you guys have given me a lot of things to look into because I, I don't know some of these. Pork pie. I'm assuming that's like ground pork, um, but I don't, know, I, I don't know what else would be in pork pie. It sounds lovely. Um, well, I, wanted, we, I have so many great things to share with you. And of course, we're starting off a whole new year, a whole new theme for 2022. So we're going to get into that. But first, all of those goodies that we talk about throughout the year are all in our Quilted Joy newsletter. So I hope that you are on our newsletter list because we have lots of tutorials, lots of worksheets, lots of downloadables, as well as information about products that we carry or specials that we have going on or events, um, maybe where I'm going to be traveling. If you would like to take a class in person, hopefully we'll get more into that in 2022. Do have some of those dates coming up. Um, so make sure that you are signed up for our Quilted Joy newsletter. And then uh, every month we premiere a new limited edition Glide thread pack. And this month is the Sparkle Fairy uh, limited edition thread pack. Um, and it's three gorgeous colors. So you have Hawaiian blue, fawn, and peacock are all in that sparkle fairy pack. And it's absolutely gorgeous. Of course, Glide has that little bit of a sheen to it. So it'll pick up the light. It's a 40 weight polyester. It'll run really well. And if you're an embroiderer, maybe you aren't um, doing a lot of machine quilting because Glide, of course, you can run in both a sit down um, machine as well as a stand up machine. But if you like to embroider, um, Glide is a wonderful thread for embroidery as well. Um, so these, I think these colors will really, um, you'll find a lot of use for them and they're just absolutely gorgeous so the limited edition pack it's only for January so snag it um, as soon as you can and we've already had a lot of orders go out so um, go ahead and, and put them in because once these are gone they are gone uh, for January but we will have them for the whole month of January 2022 um, and then I did want to invite you on January the 19th, so that's in, in a couple weeks, um, Wednesday, January the 19th at 1 o'clock, um, we will do a, a live chat and ask me anything. And um, whatever you have on your mind, we can cover. We have a lot of folks who send in questions that we cover during that time. And um, we also just chat, and I typically share some things that are going on in, in our little world um, so that um, we can get to know each other a little bit. So uh, that will be in uh, both the Quilted Joy YouTube uh, channel as well as the Quilta Joy Clubhouse there on Facebook. So that is on Wednesday, January the 19th. Okay, so I want to tell you guys about, so, so we did 2021, the year of the grid, talking all about the grids, all the different ways you can use the grids. Well, in 2022, we're going to talk about rulers. And one of the ways to talk about rulers and how to use rulers and how to play with rulers is to get you a sandbox that you can enjoy that's low risk, low entry, um, so that you don't get all bunched up if you make a mistake. And the best thing to do, the best thing to use for that are panels. And so we have actually put together, you're gonna love this, this panel. So this is a kit that you can get from us. It's the Nocturnal Forest Quilt Kit. And it features, the inside features um, one fourth, one quarter of a panel. And I wanna show you the panel so you can see how cool this is. This is made by um, Moda by uh, Gingerbur, and she has all these wonderful, uh, you probably have a, a photo of this in the computer, don't you, Kelsey? Okay, so I'm just going to hold this up so people can see it, but they can probably see it better with the photo that you have. So the panel itself has four different animals. You got your two foxes, you got your owl, you got your two bunnies, and you got your bear. And I think my favorite are the foxes and the bunnies. Um, but take a look at all of that wonderful space that you have behind the animals and how much fun you can have playing and discovering and, and thinking about how to quilt um, the panel. So this kit, you'll use only one of those animals, only one of those quarters. So out of one panel, you have four different options of the center of the kit that you can fill. And so what we've done is um, gone through with the kit and I've in the pattern shown you multiple ways of how to quilt it using different rulers so that you can approach it with either a beginner mentality, intermediate or advanced mentality, just however you feel comfortable. But giving you, it always annoys me when I see, you know, quilt is desired. I know that probably annoys you too, because I want to know, like, what are my options? Like, give me some choices. And I may or may not agree with those, but I'd like some choices. And so that's what we've done in the pattern is I've gone through and I've shown different ways that you can elevate this panel kit 
so that you have places to play. And we gave you lots of wonderful white space too, so that again, that you can play in these areas. And then um, we have a, a few different threads to think about. You may have threads that you love. We just have picked out some different threads um, that will work well. Kelsey, is it gonna be best to show here? So there's like a coral. Now this is a different pink. This is just a plain um, pink. So we're gonna talk here in a little bit about um, uh, some ways to quilt this. So ignore this pink. The kit actually is more of the salmon-y color, coral color. Um, you, I also used um, a variegated thread, so I don't know if you've played much with variegated threads, but this particular one, you know, it changes every inch, and it's kind of pastel-y colors, so it's, again, it's kind of low anxiety because it's not super, um, you do? Oh, good. It's not, it doesn't have a lot of contrast against the white, so it allows you to play without getting bunched up about it. Um, and then we've got flint, and then I've got the darker shadow. I was gonna say, I've got the darker one loaded, but I can't remember the name of it, so shadow. Um, so, uh, so you've got, have you shown the, you showed the fox one, right? Can you show, what do you have next? Okay, the bunny rabbit, because I like the bunny rabbit. So the bunny rabbit, same pattern, just different center, right? It's just the different donut hole, but it's the same donut. Um, or you could do, um, let's do the bear next. Or there's the bear, again, it's the same pattern. Um, you just put whatever animal you want. And then finally, there's the owl. And that, um, isn't that adorable? So the owl would be the center, and then the same pattern, it's the same piecing around the outside. Um, so what we've done is we've, we've given you, in the kit, you have enough to do um, that one of your choices, just pick one of the animals, and then you could always get um, additional kits to have additional fabric to, um, you know, step out those other, um, those other animals. I'm wondering, Kelsey, I hadn't thought about this, but we don't have where if they wanted to just get a kit without the panel, like if they're wanting to do like the bunny and the fox. Um, so anyway, we should think about that. I hadn't, I hadn't thought about that. So anyway, the pattern's in there, you'll have everything that you need, and then um, we will, let's look at different ways that I kind of elevated the piecing to frame that out. So I have it here on the computer. Can you see that okay, Kelsey? No? I have the, oh, you, oh, okay, hold on, you guys. I think I'm on the wrong Wi-Fi, which would be helpful to be on the correct Wi-Fi. So Kelsey, you tell me when you can see it. All right, and in the chat, tell me, do you guys like the fox? Do you like the bunnies? Do you like the bear? Do you like the owl? Um, which one would you pick? All right, we're there. Okay, um, I picked the fox just because I like the, how they're dancing, but it was, a, it was a close second. The bunnies were a close second for me. Okay, so here's the, um, here's the pattern, and I just wanna walk you through different ways to quilt it. And so the first thing that I wanted to do as I approached this, um, design was to figure out how I wanted to frame it out, um, how I wanted to add some drama to it. So the first thing I did, oop, there it goes, is I, I took a look at those corners. So see how those corners, just by adding um, a squared off design, it kind of um, frames it out. It allows the black, which is that, that on point frame, to come forward. And I liked that a lot. So that was one option I played with. And look at how dramatic this one is. So this one ties into the piecing and anytime you can have your quilting lines tie into the piecing, it'll really bring that quilting and, and uh, piecing into the same voice. And so by crossing through the background of the fox, I'm able to frame out the interior animal um, that I've chosen to put inside um, my, my quilt. And then I've got um, just some chevrons here, again, using the piecing to go up into those white spaces. So that was an option. And then I really liked this idea as well, where I could come out into the corners. And let's turn on that previous layer. So look at those together. Isn't that dramatic? Isn't that fun? And that's with straight line quilting. So whether you are on a sit-down machine using a walking foot, or you are on a stand-up machine using a ruler, um, it's a different way to look at and think about how to frame out this, um, these animals. All right, so I'm gonna show you uh, one of those. And as I told you in the pattern, I've given you multiple ways of how to frame it out, multiple 
ways to quilt it. So let's take a look at this frame that I, I really like. So with this one, I just echoed that interior on point um, square to bring it out um, to kind of reflect what's going on. And that is easy enough to do, again, with um, a walking foot, but with rulers, because of the piecing, I can actually use the piecing and eliminate all marking, because I'm just using the seams that are given to me from the piecing. So with that, I wanted to pay attention to those interior, um, those interior portions. And so at this point, as I'm kind of designing it, I'm not really thinking too hard about the continuous line. I am just kind of figuring out how I would like to frame out the pattern um, to make it pop. Um, and so then I thought, well, you know, I really don't want to take away from the animals. So just a meander around that, the um, outside of that black on point um, behind there, behind the animals, that meander will allow me to push the batting down, basically to move that space away from the eye and allow the animals themselves to pop up and come towards the eye. And this is where I use that variegated thread that I was showing you before that when it's on white, it's kind of pearlescent. Um, the name of that one is grain. It's affinity grain and it has a pearlescent kind of view to it as it goes on a white background. All right, so I really like this and I thought that it would be a good, even if you um, aren't super comfortable with, with uh, machine quilting, that um, this uh, meander, maybe you don't wanna do a meander, maybe you don't do a loopy, maybe there's some other um, background filler that you prefer, you could always do that. And so then I started to look at those, um, those cornerstones. So take a look at that. I'm gonna turn it off again because I know that was a lot to pop on you initially. So I'm gonna turn it off so that you can see. I'm talking about the four corners, those checkerboard corners. How can I bring those four corners and add drama? Do you see how much drama is coming into the foxes? So what I did with the quilting was I had them kind of pull that drama out. And so um, the way to do this, there's a couple of ways to do this. Um, but the first thing that I did, I'm gonna turn this off just so that you can see, and I'm gonna turn on a new layer. and um, by the way, if you are interested, um, this is a free program. It's called GIMP, and it's just super easy to draw with on my computer. And there's lots of tutorials out there, so it makes it easy if I want to um, kind of play around um, in my computer to audition designs. So let's take a look at just this cornerstone, just this checkerboard, and see how I would quilt it. So I went up and looked for a way to get kind of a crowning diamond in those checker, in those cornerstones. And then I thought, you know, that's probably not enough quilting in there. So then I went through again and echoed that diamond and did that on all four sides, right? When all four sides here. And then um, inside that negative space that I created with my diamond, um, you can do any kind of filler you want. You could go back to that meander if that is what you're comfortable with. I wanted to make the quilting diagrams approachable to all different levels of quilting and all different styles of quilting. So you could leave it like that. What I did with mine is I went in here and I think I'm gonna zoom in and move over up. What I did was I thought about, um, they're called wishbones, infinity signs, um, lower uh, capital letter L's, and we've talked about this in past clubhouses, where it's just a travel up, but because I space these out, when I come back, I, um, when I come back, let me do it again, because I'm talking to you and not thinking. When I come back, there's enough room for me to sneak back through. So I come out to the sides and then I'm gonna come down to here and echo back. So I've left room to exit so that it overlaps with itself. So let's go over here, I'm gonna do it again. Can you see this okay, Kelsey, or should I zoom in? Uh -huh. Oh, I don't think it wants me. Oh, there it goes. I was trying command uh, plus and it was shift plus. 
Is that better, Kelsey? OK, so let's take a look. So I'm going to do a little um, loops. There we go. And out. And then I'm going to come back and fill in the negative space I left to get out. And that will allow me to travel up and travel back. So when you're thinking about the path, the first path I took was this outside diamond. The second path I took was this inside diamond. And the last path I took was this loopy up to the top and then coming back and filling in the gaps um, so that it was all in one continuous path. All right, so that left me with thinking about what to do with these gray and black areas. And in the year of the grid in 2021, one of the um, ones that we talked about, I'm going to try to take these arrows off because there it is, it's, it was in my way. One of the things that we talked about was our ladybug. And our ladybug was on a roller coaster, our ladybug was swimming, our ladybug was doing all kinds of things. And if you're watching this and you're like, I don't know what you're talking about, ladybug, go back in the year of the grid in 2021 in our clubhouse and you're gonna find lots of grid designs based on our little ladybug hopping around a house. One of the very first ones we did, and I wanna say it was January, January 2021, we just did our ladybug coming out of the attic and hopping across the ceiling and hopping down the wall and hopping up the wall. Now, this ladybug has encountered a staircase. So for our staircase, she's gonna hop down the staircase to this point. Now she's gonna go floor and back, wall, staircase, floor, floor, and she's headed back to where she started. So that design, that continuous curve design, is what I did inside all of these kind of framed out um, areas around that checkerboard. All right, so I'm going to zoom out and turn off that one and turn on and turn on that one. So that is those um, diamonds in the cornerstones and those ladybug hops um, to finish out my cornerstones. And then it was a simple um, uh, addition to the quilt to get the, um, I just echoed, let me go up here to the top. I just echoed this line here and put in my meander so that I'm gonna change colors so that hopefully this is, you see okay, Kelsey? So far? Okay. So that this space, this space is unquilted. So you have this space that's quilted and this space that's quilted densely so that those push back so that this area and my animal will pop up at the eye. So it's playing with um, density that allows me to kind of sculpt the quilt and allows me to direct the eye on the quilt, which is just like one of the coolest things about machine quilting. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this one on because this is the last piece of it where I thought, and I'm gonna turn off just so you can see the difference, was to try to frame out that fox or whatever animal you choose. So in order to frame out that fox, I had to think about how to pull the, um, the piecing together and crossing through the lines. So many times we think about um, quilting and we think, oh, we have to stay. Like if I'm in the gray area, I can't cross into the black area. And that's simply not true. If you cross through your piecing, there's a lot of drama that you can add. Um, so by going here and then I would dip down into my gray and then I would come here, dip down into my gray and come here. I wanna say it was here and go up and then finally here. So that is how I, I framed out that fox. Um, and then inside that fox, let me zoom in a little bit. Inside that fox, in this negative space here, that's where I played with more of that uh, meander. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. So this is where I played with more of that meander. So going in here, and, and connecting these lines and just making that meander cross through into the gray gave me um, spacing here that, uh, again, added another layer, another frame to the pattern. 
All right, so the final thing that I did, let me zoom out. So I think I've got another layer on. No, there you go. The final thing that I did was um, I actually went in here to the foxes and just put a little diamond, again, to echo the diamonds that were in each of the cornerstones. And then around the fox, I just uh, used that um, shadow glide, the, gl the color shadow to go around the foxes and then fill in with a meander. And so that meander is a great little happy place. If you have a background filler that's your happy place, um, use that for these background filler areas and then stretch yourself with these diamonds and these ladybugs um, to frame out those corners. So, so there you go, that is the fox. And then, like I said, in the pattern, in the kit, I've given you um, other ideas, other uh, variations that you could choose um, to grow your skills. So that if you took one of these panels with a different, with a four different animals, um, you could use one to kind of get your feet wet and then use the next one to kind of dive into a little um, more detailed, more complicated quilting um, as you kind of discover what kind of, of ruler work and what kind of um, quilting you enjoy doing best. So I hope that was helpful to you to see how to frame this out. Um, I deliberately designed this pattern to give you places to play that were low key areas to play. Um, so uh, pop, uh, go ahead and, and snag one of these kits and we'll be talking more about some of the variations um, in our Ask Me Anything um, session in a couple weeks. Um, and we can kind of look at some of your questions if you have questions about it. Um, if you are a beginner quilter and you're like, I, I just started quilting, I really don't know up from down as of yet, this is a nice pattern to start with because it has so much drama and it, it really just deals with um, some strip sets and some uh, half square triangles and then some hourglass units. So some basic units to quilting and then it gives you places that you can play with your machine quilting, whether it's a walking foot or a, or a stand-up machine. Um, Brad, did we have any questions that came through? The owls one. Hey, all right. I'm telling you, the bunny rabbits are super awesome too. What'd you say? The owls match the backing fabric. The owls match the backing. Oh yeah, the backing fabric. Thank you for that. Yeah, check out this um, backing fabric um, for the uh, panel kit. Isn't that gorgeous? The little owls. And what's awesome about this is you don't have to piece anything for this backing. It's the right size for your quilt. You don't have to put a seam in the backing fabric. Again, I really wanted to make this very approachable to a new quilter, as well as to a quilter who's maybe more focused on just growing their machine quilting skills. Any other questions that came through, Brad? Um, no. no? All right. Awesome. I hope you, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And if you do have any questions about it, go ahead and pop that in the chat. And then here in a minute, I'm gonna show you some of that ruler work that I did um, on the machine and show you some choices that you have. I have a great ruler to show you for those ladybug hops. If the ladybug hops intimidate you, I've got a great ruler that will kind of take all of that fear away. And then I wanna show you a couple of straight edge rulers that I think will help you based on whether you're a new um, entrant into, uh, into ruler work um, or if you um, are more experienced with rulers. All right, I do want to thank our sponsor, APQS. Um, APQS machines are 100% handcrafted there in Iowa, and they're loved the world over. And APQS machines come with a lifetime warranty. So quilt forever, right? Um, if you want more information about APQS machines, you can contact um, us here at Quilted Joy. You can also contact your local APQS store or your local APQS dealer. So visit apqs.com for more information about APQS long arm machines. So thanks, APQS. All right, I have a wonderful Looky Loo tour to show you guys, and I hope you all enjoy um, our tours. Um, I always enjoy being nosy and seeing how other people kind of set their space up. Um, this is Anne Marie Hammond, and she was uh, kind enough to allow me to uh, take a look at her space and see how she has her sewing world uh, all set up. Hi, Anne Marie, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's good. It's good to see you. Where are you located, Anne Marie? I am in Bloomington, Indiana. Wonderful. And you have your uh, quilting studio. We're in your upstairs, your garage. Where are we? We are in my basement. Wonderful. I love the quilt block that you have there on the on the wall behind you. That's beautiful. It's one of those metal. 
Yeah. You can see it. It's one of those metal signs. Yeah. I had one of those in my uh, brick wall at my old house when we moved. I couldn't get it out of the brick for the life of me. So the whole thing was just um, the whole uh, house was sold with that uh, quilt block nailed to my, uh, my, my brick wall. So, um, well, can you rotate the camera around so we can see your lovely space? Sure. Oh, you even have windows, big windows in your basement. Oh, that's, that's the escape route. Yeah, aren't you lucky though to have all that that wonderful light in there? So goodness, you have some lovely cabinets there with your computer, and you can sit there. Oh yeah, oh it's all finished out. Oh look at your yak. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. So did you have all that custom done? My, I'm very lucky. My father-in-law actually made all these for me. Whoa, he even made you a table that you can sink your domestic machine into. Yes. With wow. Some With some what? Help from my husband. Yeah. What? Yeah, that is a wonderful. And I, I love your yak. What a great space you have there. And then you've got something on wheels. What is that? A cabinet uh, this, on wheels? This is just a bunch of Ikea cabinets stuck together on a big base with wheels. And you uh -huh. can see I use it for my cutting table. Perfect. I move that around quite a bit. And then I also have the Ikea cabinet behind there with wheels and that's my ironing station and so you just created a new top to go on top of the ikea cubbies there to create your ironing station one is just a countertop that we made that's that one uh -huh. Uh -huh. and then the ironing board is actually a butcher block from the hardware store that we covered with the ironing fabric oh wonderful awesome okay and then i see your long arm machine what kind of machine do you have i have an apqs lucy with an IntelliQuilter. Perfect. And is it a 10 foot, a 12 foot? That is a 12 foot. A 12 foot. Wonderful. And I see you have a design wall. Oh, you got all kinds of critters back there. You've got a sloth and, a, and some I do. I'm participating in a couple of block of the month. So that's where I'm storing my blocks while I work. Oh, I love that block on the upper left. That's so dainty and pretty. Love that one. Um, so you, do you quilt for others? I do quilt for others. Perfect. So you have, um, I'm sure, a decent thread stash. Where do you keep your thread stash? I don't have as good of one as you do, but yeah, <laughs> mine is all just in some of these drawers in this cabinet over here. And then you can see I have all my bobbins on mm -hmm. top. In those boxes, you have the pre-wound bobbins in yes. the boxes. Yeah. And then is that a like a magnetic um, bulletin board up top? That is. That is. And then you know how the the bobbins are magnetic, so all my little spare ones <laughs> I keep on there so that they don't get so tangled. Yeah, awesome, awesome. All right, and so so you got all your tools and everything, your oil and whatnot for the machine. Yes. Okay, all right, keep going. All right, so then this, oh, I should turn the light on so you can see. Yeah. This is my beautiful walk-in closet. Oh, nice got a lot of room there and that's a gorgeous quilt thanks so you have your fabric in clear bins right yes and are they like by color then uh sort of some of them are by color some of them are by project mm -hmm. and some of them are just they didn't fit anywhere else so that's where they went so there they go yeah and then you've got rolls of batting in there as well i do there's Quite a few. So this side is the, all the spare batting and little batting scraps that seem to add up. Oh, okay. So you keep all those batting scraps? I Yeah, those ones are usable size. The ones that are too small, I collect and I donate to people that make pet beds. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. But the ones in the you bins have an are octopus usable on still. The you have an octopus in there. You have all kinds of animals. I do. That's actually a I pillow, but I, I, like, it. I like I just put I it there because like I can too. see it a lot. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for letting us see your, your fabric closet. That's wonderful. I am I love my closet. It took me a long time to get to that point. So I'm, yeah, sometimes I just go in there and spend time sitting there looking at stuff. <laughs> yeah. I love that you have a, 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 you have a chair in your closet so you can go in and, and uh, work through your fabric and find out what you're, figure out what you're looking for. Yeah. That's my step stool. Oh, uh-huh. Oh yeah. So, oh, but that I, makes sense. I have that quilt laid out there so that I don't get it all folded up before I can quilt it. Sure. Okay, so talking. what? So what's there to your right? If we keep turning to your right. Okay, so this closet? is just another closet. It's not exciting, and I'm not going to open the door because it's cleaning, <laughs> it's cleaning supplies. 
Okay. All right. So not not exciting at all. Uh huh. We're back to the beginning. And then we're back to the beginning. I love that you have um a, a floor material that's easy to pick up thread tails and um, yeah. keep clean. I feel like I spend all day cleaning up thread from that. Yeah, and and off all your clothing too. I'm sure. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, can you turn the camera around so we can see see you? Sure. Awesome. Well, Amory, what are three things that you think are pretty cool right now that you would recommend to your bestie? They don't have to be quilt related. So my family just finished watching Only Murders in the Building and we really enjoyed that. All of us enjoyed that. Yes. Can't wait for the next season. That's a great yes. show. Yeah, that was fun. Um, yeah. well, let's see. Going outside and going for walks. We try to do that every day, especially because most of the time I'm standing in here during the day. Mm hmm. I like to read a lot. So I'm going to recommend a Kindle because you can always have at least one book with you. Yes. Yeah. At least one. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I love mine as well. I can highlight things and make notes and um, I have it uh, connected to an audiobook so I can get in the car and listen right where it leaves off um, as I'm reading. So it's oh, quite nice. Cool. I didn't like to yeah. do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like magic. Well, if people want to connect with you, Amory, where can they find you online? You can find me at my website, www.quiltingbyannemarie.com or on Instagram at just underscore and underscore Anne Marie or Marie, Anne Marie. Yes. Perfect. All right. Yeah. And we've got it up there. If people want to uh, hop over and see all of the quilty goodness you've got on your Instagram feed. So thank you so much for joining me, Anne Marie. It was really good to see you and um, we'll see you in the clubhouse. Great. Thanks for having me. Okay. See you later. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much, Anne-Marie. It was so nice to see your space and I really appreciate the time that you spent with us. You know, I think sunlight in a sewing room is like a, a, a super great blessing. My current sewing room um, at my home, which is more of a closet, uh, it has a single bu bulb, there is no sunlight whatsoever and it changes everything when you can bring a little sunlight into a room. So um, love your space, Anne-Marie, and I really appreciate it. And like that yak too, that was pretty cool. Um, okay, so we did have some questions that came in. One of the questions was about the backing fabric, the owls, don't you love the owls? Um, and so you have five extra inches of backing fabric um, in the backing kit, uh, finishing kit with the panel kit. So you can use it to load to the long arm. Um, and that's what I did is, is uh, I used that backing kit to load it when I quilted this one. Um, in fact, Kelsey, if I turn on the camera, um, can, you, can you see it? Okay, so isn't that awesome? Don't you love them? So they're right side up, upside down, aren't they great? And they're little sleepy owls. Um, and then the binding is in the kit and that's this um, black, uh, tone on tone um, fabric here. And then there was a question that came in about how did I quilt the foxes? So hopefully, can you see it okay, Kelsey? Okay, so I, all I did is I just went around the haunch and the ears and the jaw of the fox to give it definition. Oh, sorry. All right, sorry. I was pointing out to my eyeballs. It looked <laughs> so I went around the haunch and I went around the ears and the jaw to give the head some definition. So I, I certainly went around the outside of the fox first, but then just to add some definition to the actual animal, um, just follow the lines on the animal. And then you can see that diamond, which is the echo, right? It's the echo of the diamond I used in those outside corners. And then that wishbony um, infinity up and then back that I talked to you about before, that is what I put inside here too, same thing. So I left a gap so that I could travel up and then I could come back and fill that gap in. And then as far as the outside corners go, using that same kind of infinity um, wishbony thing, went in here and then left a gap and then came back to fill that out. And so take a look at the color choices that I use too on the thread, because that, um, when you think about how you're going to quilt something, 
think about what quilting lines you want to push towards the eye and what you want to recede from the eye. So um, somebody asked, you know, what is shadow? Shadow is the color of glide thread I used on the black. So it's not like a deep black, but it's not a gray either. The color is, is called shadow. That's literally the color of the thread cone. And so it gives a little bit of difference, contrast ever so slightly against the black fabric to allow the quilting lines to pop up. And again, it's just, it's just meander. It's just a meander. Um, so shadow was used there, but in order to have these corners kind of bring out to the eye, I switched the color to that um, corally color. Kelsey, do you remember what the name of it is? Tango. Tang tango? Yeah. Tango. So tango is the color glide I used in here. And then um, this is that uh, white variegated pearlescence uh, called grain. I'm not sure why they called it grain, because you know when I think of grain, I think of browns, but this is more pearl colors. Um, but take a look, that line, the frame, that is back to that tango. That's back to that tango color. So by using the different colors of thread, I can direct the eye and frame things out um, in an interesting way. So don't be afraid to change colors, especially something like this, where it's small, it's approachable. You know, I'm, I'm just kind of playing and using it to learn um, what to do. And again, these quilting diagrams are all in the pattern that comes with it so that you can kind of walk through um, and choose how you want to approach it. Um, but by going around those foxes or the bunnies or the owls, whatever interior animal you choose, just go around and define their main features. And oh, there it is. Just go around and define their main features and that'll be enough to, um, to nail it down. So Kelsey, let's look at doing some of these lines then um, on the machine. And um, I wanted to show you a couple of choices because if you are new to uh, ruler work, um, one of the first things you're going to want to learn is how to stitch in the ditch, how to do straight lines. And there's so much that you can do with straight line quilting. Um, and we actually had an episode, I think it was, it was a while ago, um, about using straight line quilting in border designs. So, um, uh, what we've got here are a couple of different choices. This one is really interesting to me. Um, I wonder, Kelsey, if I put it on the white, would it be? Can you see it a little better on the white? Yeah. Okay. So this one is designed by Angela Walters, and it is made by Creative Grids. And this one is called the SID, S-I-D, Stitch in the Ditch, right? It's super obvious what you'd use it for. And um, by the way, if you are on a sit-down machine, you need to know if you have a low shank or a high shank machine, because that will dictate what ruler you buy, high shank or low shank. And it has to do with um, the height of that foot that's on your machine. So you need to know that. If you have a long arm machine, you have a high shank uh, foot. So um, you have you all of the traditional machine quilting rulers will work with your long arm if you have a sit down you need to know which size shank you have now what's interesting to me about this ruler is this negative space this empty space inside the ruler itself and so if you have a long arm machine where you can detach the um the foot um kelsey can you see that where the the foot tilt up yeah is that better? Okay, so you can take this foot off and put a different foot on, but in order to kind of engage the interior of this um, stitch in the ditch ruler, you would take that foot off and then you would put the foot on inside the ruler. So Kelsey, is this a good way to show it? Yeah. Okay, and then you don't have so many dang things to look at or worry about because your ruler, your, uh, your hopping foot rather, is trapped inside the space so that if you are doing stitch in the ditch work, you don't have to worry so much about uh, holding the ruler and holding the machine and um, you know walking and chewing gum at the same time. It kind of traps you so that you can um, uh, stay in the, the ditch that you're after and not wander outside of the ditch. Um, so it has an interior portion to use. And then it also has, I call them molars. Um, so they are like little teeth that come up and so it has a, a line here and that would be if I were going to stitch in the ditch I would put that line on the seam and it naturally then when I stick my hopping foot in it or my ruler foot if I'm in a domestic machine it'll naturally position my needle a quarter of an inch away 
from that edge, which is exactly in the ditch that I'm after. So those little teeth are super helpful to me. And let's say I don't want it right in the ditch. I want it to be, I don't know, like um, a, a, a quarter of a way or something like that. I can position these little teeth wherever I choose and it will give me um, a different depth, whether it's a quarter inch outline or a half inch outline. And then Angela on her, she also has these curves on this side. So there's some interesting um, kind of clamshell-y things that you can get with this side of the ruler. Um, so there's a lot of different things. This one is a great one if you are new, new to ruler work, then the, the SID ruler may be just what will uh, be most helpful to you. And then I did want to show you there are some other rulers um, that are longer, um, that have those same uh, little teeth. This one happens to be made by um, Beth Ann Nemesh, uh, White Arbor Quilting, and we have these in the Quilted Joy shop um, as well. But it has those molars to help you. It's just a longer span than the SID ruler was just a shorter span. Um, and so some of these lines you may find that you know, you want to use this edge of the SID or this edge of the SID, or you may want, to, may want to break out a bigger ruler. And then I told you I had a ruler to show you for those um, ladybugs that are hopping around, and that is this ruler. This one is called the BFF. It's made by the Quilted Pineapple, and truly this is my BFF. Um, it's, it's just a really nice shape, a really nice size. It fits in my hand well, um, and it allows me to do those ladybug hops really easily. So let's take a look at how uh, to do one of those corner stones um, on the uh, panel and so the the diamond shapes is what I'm after and so the first thing I want to do is I just want to mark um, and I am using a Marvy air erasable fabric marker it's the lavender and it'll um, air erase or water erase and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mark my diagonals here on those whites and then what I've done is I've gone about an inch and a half in and given myself a little tick and an inch and a half in and given myself a little tick so I have targets here to mark. And then um, up here in the top corner, I also went in and I'm gonna mark my diagonal and I'm gonna mark where that crosses. So that's my target there. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start out um, down here in this pink corner. And like I said, you would do this with all four corners of your nocturnal forest panel um, once you have it pieced. So I'm just going to start right there, drop my needle down. And then I'm going to go up, um, I think I'm going to use a slightly longer ruler just to go through to this next um, little tick mark here. So I've got my ruler up against the hopping foot and then I'm going to head over and position it a quarter inch away from that intersection. And then I'm going to head up. It's a little hard to do this with a camera stuck to the um, handle. But we'll get there. And then I'm going to head up to the top part. Now, it goes without saying, I'm going to stop right there because I need to position my hand for the camera. I'm going to go under. It goes without saying that you need a ruler base on your machine. I don't want you using rulers without a ruler base. You need a pinky swear promise to me that you won't on a stand-up machine. Um, use uh, rulers without a ruler base. The ruler base just slides onto the throat of the machine. It helps hold the rulers up so that you can practice good ruler safety and they won't hop over, your rulers won't hop over um, the, uh, the hopping foot. All right, so I'm gonna head to that next target and then I'm gonna head back down to where I started. And I do that outside one first to nail down the space. All right, so now I'm headed to those, that next um, target. So by doing the outside first, um, that just allows me to better control the movement of the fabric. As I put more stitches in, the fabric is gonna draw up. And so if I take the time to do any outside work first, it'll stabilize the area. And I'm gonna head back down to my point. Now, I am using that shadow color here on these fabrics so that you can see it really well on camera. But on the actual panel kit, I use that um, tango color. So choose accordingly. You know, you want to choose the color that won't, um, won't make your heart rate go up too bad, right? Because if it's high contrast like this, you know, black on a white, it's going to be 
you know, a higher stakes environment than if you were to match the color, for example, or go with something that blends. Okay, so let's now, let's do the interior of this diamond. And I'm just gonna do that, um, the, um, the infinity, the lowercase l that we did before, but I'm gonna leave space so that when I come back, I can fill that area in. And out, and now I'm gonna come back and I'm just gonna fill in the space that I, uh, I left open. And that gives me a natural exit point. All right, so I'm gonna break my threads just so that I can move the camera around so that um, Kelsey can make sure you get a, a nice view of what we did. And that having those diamonds come out from the center animal really does add all kinds of visual drama um, to the quilt. And I, if you're not into this infinity sign, you could fill that with just a basic meander. You could fill it with a loopy. You could leave it alone. It's not like that's a lot of space. I was just trying to tie in what I was going to do um, on my interior foxes with the outside portion of the quilt. All right, so let's go up here to take a look at this BFF ruler and how it will help you get those um, ladybug hops. So when I say ladybug hop, I'm just meaning a, a curve. It's just that it's intimidating to say, I want you to put a curve here because you're like, what kind of curve? Well, it's a ladybug curve. And so the way that you can get it is with a ruler. And so this BFF ruler has a nice shallow curve. So I've got it right up against the edge of my hopping foot and I'm gonna come over to that intersection. And then I'm gonna come down this wall. And then I'm gonna go up this wall. So I have some choices here. I could move this around and use my ruler on the opposite side. But with the BFF ruler, I can just switch to the opposite side of the ruler. How awesome is that? And then I'm not having to change positions so much. All right, so now I'm gonna come down my um, staircase. I'm gonna hop over. So I hold the ruler with my non-dominant hand and I hold the machine with my dominant hand. I'm gonna come down this wall and then I'm gonna switch the ruler around the BFF and go back up. And now I am at the staircase. And if you have any questions, um, do pop them there into the chat. All right, and then I'm gonna go across this way. And I'm headed back to where I started. So back up. And you can see how pretty the shadow color is. It's nice to not have like a straight up black or straight up gray. Um, it's got some variety to it, I, not, I, not a variegation, but it's just not um, you know, straight up black. So it, it will shine and look nice against a black uh, fabric. All right, I'm gonna break my threads so that you can see how that all looks. So there, if, if you've been looking at our ladybugs and thinking about our ladybugs, you might consider trying the BFF ruler out because I think it'll help you get those, those um, curves those that are, are kind of elusive to a lot of people. All right, did we have any questions that came in? We have a couple. Yeah? Do you quilt everything that is the same color thread and change to the next color thread? So because this panel is smaller, um, I certainly could make the choice to do everything of one color and then do everything of the next color. Um, what I try to do is kind of do pick out like what color is the majority of it. And so um, I would, on this one, I did a lot of the um, meander first because it was so dense um, and then went back through and filled in the uh, frames. So I did go back and forth with this one. Personally, that was the choice I made was went back and forth with the colors. Um, but if I'm talking about a bigger quilt, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll leapfrog it. So of course I'm talking about a longer machine. So everything between my bars that I want to quilt with say white, I'll do all the white and then I'll roll it forward and do all the white for the next pass. And then I'll roll it back to that first pass, do all the red I wanted to do, roll it forward, do all the red I wanted to do. Then I'm ready to roll it forward again to the third pass, all the red, roll again, fourth pass, all the red, roll it back. Third pass, white, fourth pass, white. So I'm leapfrogging two 
rows at a time. So complicated answer. Simple answer is for a quilt this size, um, I would focus more on what you're trying to do, what skill set you're trying to grow, which would be using rulers and machine quilting, and not worry about, oh, now I gotta go change colors. Focus on getting the design, getting the look with the rulers that you're after, and don't worry about the fact that you gotta change out you know, thread. Thread's not expensive. Just, just focus on what you're there to learn. And that's why this is so approachable and great because there's lots of different things that I can pack in here to teach you. Um, and then you can decide if you want to uh, do it all in one color and one pass or switch out the different colors. Any other questions, Brad? Where do I buy a ruler base? So whether you have an APQS machine or any other brand machine, you would get a ruler base from your manufacturer. So you said you have a 2014 uh, Lenny, so you would call APQS and tell them you have a 2014 Lenny and then they can get you um, hooked up. If you have a different brand long arm machine, um, then you would call that manufacturer. Of course, if you have a sit down machine, you don't need a ruler base. The sit down machine is the ruler base. So you wouldn't need to do that. And you're gonna control the machine the fabric a little bit differently with a sit-down machine than you would with a long arm machine, but you can still use the same designs, the same path, the same rulers. Um, you just need to know if you're a high shank ruler person or a low shank ruler person if you were on a sit-down machine. Any other questions that came through? Is your long arm on cruise and do you lower your speed? So my long arm, my uh, APQS machine, it does have, um, it's called Quilt Glide, other manufacturers call it different things, Coast, Cruise. It's just a secondary form of stitch regulation that you use when you're doing little tiny things. So when I'm doing ruler work, I keep that off because there's a lot of times when I'm doing ruler work that I need to kind of like pause in a line or remove or move my ruler slightly. And I want to have full control of my needle because anytime I've got my ruler and my needle engaged, I want to be very clear about where that ruler is uh, seated so that I don't accidentally crunch that ruler. Um, by not paying attention and having it hop over the ruler foot. Um, as far as that um, filler design, that um, meander design that I did with the Affinity uh, color that was grain, um, let me show you. I, I don't, am I still on there, Kelsey? Okay, all right. Let me show you that. Um, So for this, hopefully you can get a sense. These are these you can get a sense with my finger of the size of this. It's pretty um, small. For this, I absolutely used Quilt Glide. Um, or if you have Coast or Cruise on your brand machine, that I absolutely used it there, right? Absolutely used it there. Um, but when it and and in here. But as far as like ruler work, no, I wouldn't use it. I wouldn't use it there at all. And then if you don't have um, that feature on your machine. So like the, the, the question from the um, person who had the 2014 Lenny, well, you don't have that feature. You don't have the quilt glide feature or, or um, other ways to do that. What you would do if you want to kind of mimic that is you would turn your speed down and you would go into manual mode. And that will allow you to make very small movements with your machine and not have the machines um, stitch regulator kind of fight you as it tries to speed up and slow down with all of your little directional changes. So drop your machine in a manual mode and turn the speed down. But when it comes to ruler work, I would keep the speed at the uh, machine, the stitch regulator set with wherever I normally stitch at, and I would keep it in regular stitch regulation mode. I would not use coast or cruise or quilt glide. Any other questions that came in, Brad? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What if you first stitch in the ditch, the panel borders and boxes before quilting the remainder of the quilt? You certainly could stitch in the ditch. However, I want you to, to take a look and notice that if I were to stitch in the ditch here, I would be kind of cutting off my frame. So it sort of depends on how you plan to quilt. I mean, you certainly could do that, but what I wanted to do was kind of bring that background filler down and cross over and come in to blur the line so that I did not have a ditch here this piecing became part of my background. But if you chose a different way of quilting, then you absolutely could go ahead and ditch this and ditch this and choose a different design, even like a back and forth. So see how this is making a chevron? Like you could continue that on. Um, I just wanted to bring out the drama and have the quilting cross through the piecing to create its own layer on my quilt and not allow the piecing to dictate where I'm allowed to quilt. 
because I'm a rebel like that, right? I have my own opinions. <laughs> Any other questions that came through, Brad? All right, and so I would love, 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 love to see what you come up with um, on your nocturnal forest um, quilt. And I would love to chat with you about it. You know, I, I would love to see what you're quilting on and give you advice and, and pop it in the clubhouse there on Facebook and our Facebook page. And um, let me see, you know, what your questions are. Let me help you. Let me kind of see how you're planning on doing it. And maybe if there's a piece of it that you want to do a little differently, let's chat about it. Like put, put it there in the clubhouse and let's kind of learn from each other and see um, how uh, it's going for you. So um, I can't wait to see uh, how people are doing with the Nocturnal Forest um, quilt uh, panel and what's great about it is that you have all those different animals to choose from so you choose your favorite and then you can always you know make it again with the next animal that's in the in the panel um, all right so I do want to show you some of the quilts that have been in the clubhouse um, in the last uh, few weeks and so those um, we call them quilt drool drooling. So Hillary, take a look at this one. Hillary says, I am trying to apply some of the most recent feather tutorials. So we did feathers in 2020. What? Yeah, in 2020. And so we did like how to put feathers into a square, how to put them into a triangle. And then we finished the year with how to do feathers in a wreath. And so um, uh, Hillary says that she has been working through some of those feather tutorials and she says by the end of the quilt I'm sure I will be better and I'm gifting this to a friend I sure hope she finds comfort in it so absolutely gorgeous Hillary you are doing a great job I really love that um, sewing machine block in the middle of your quilt too really fabulous so good for you Hillary all right Kim Kim every time I see Kim skills you guys Kim has grown so much so Kim um, got an APQS machine from us uh, not that long ago I want to say a couple years back and she just got a blue ribbon at the Kentucky State Fair like this the, what she is doing is phenomenal stuff Kim I am so dang proud of you um, so Kim um, says that the quilting on this was inspired by Judy Madsen's quilting it's a lot of work yes it would be but I love the results so take a look now she did all of those diagonals that would all be with a ruler right so there's some planning that goes on in um, those diamond shapes but um, what an extraordinary job Kim I I'm a big fan of Kim go away to go Kim all right and Charmaine loved this so Charmaine, we, this was the quilt that I picked in October of 2021 during our clubhouse meeting to show how I would quilt it if it were my quilt. And Charmaine finished it um, at the end of 2021. She said, it is called 21, and it's designed by Sharon Blackmore of the Prairie Quilt Militia of um, Airdrie, Alberta, Canada. She said, I used most of your kind suggestions on how to quilt it and enjoyed seeing the secondary designs the ruler work gave it. Oh, Charmaine, thank you so much for posting this. You know, it's so much fun to take a look at the quilts that you guys submit to be picked to um, talk about how to think and how to design and how to approach the machine quilting process with that quilt. And um, I just, I absolutely love what you've done and I um, appreciate you so much for putting it up there. Great job, Charmaine. Um, Athena, don't you love this riot of color? I love it. Um, and I love the, um, the center of the tie-dye, this real tie-dye is the Avengers. Um, love it, love it, love it. All right, Athena, she says, these four quilts um, are complete and gifted and they have hand-dyed backs. So much fun and um, the gift recipients loved them. Uh, love all of the Marvel, I'm assuming this is the back of this one, right? That it's all these Marvel fabrics and that's the back. I know plenty of people in my family who would uh, love to have that, Athena. Um, great job. And then Michelle, she finished two of her graduation quilts and hopefully get the other two done. And I noticed, Michelle, that this was um, Sarah's, um, I'm trying to think of the name of the pattern. I think it's Which Way Do We Go? Um, share, uh, for, that we did on the Love of Quilting show. And this is her pattern where it's um, one block and the way you cut it will either get you this kind of basket block or it'll get you these kind of um, arrow shapes. So thanks for posting that, Michelle. And then here's Deborah's um, quilt. And Deborah says, I did it. I figured out a plan to quilt this and I'm extremely happy. It gave me a big boost in confidence in my ability to design. I use my IQ computer system. The piecing design is called Circle Dance. For the quilting, I use line pattern to stitch in the ditch of the large circles, echo pattern for the bullseye, clip pattern, one of Helen Bazinski's swirls in the smaller circles, and Northern Lights Wonder uh, fill um, by Wasatch Quilting. Um, Deborah, 
you learned so much. I know you did in doing this. This was just like one big um, master's degree in how to do custom quilting with a computer system. So good for you, Deborah. I'm super proud of you. And then Cheryl, she says that she used both the Baroque grid and then the flower in the border from December's uh, December 2021's Clubhouse. And the backing is minky. Thank you, Angela, for your quilting inspiration. You guys, you have to like... When I, when I opened this up and I saw this on Facebook and I saw that Cheryl took those lessons that we just did and how gorgeous that is, how wonderful that um, uh, worked for her quilt, I just, I mean, it was like the best little Christmas gift ever to see that you guys are um, enjoying what we're doing and that it's making sense to you and that you're using it on your quilts and you're feeling inspired and empowered by um, what we share. So thank you so much, Cheryl. That meant a great deal to me. All right, Tina, don't you love this? Tina, um, she says, honoring the Jewish holiday on this little treasure, the owner was tickled. Um, so she's got a Jewish star. She's got the name there in the middle. She's got her little um, her, don't you love the, uh, the bumblebees have this uh, ribbon candy throughout them and then the bumblebees have feathers for wings. Um, just as there's a dreidel up here. Oh, just really gorgeous. Thank you so much for sending that in, um, Tina. I love it. All right, Linda. Linda, Linda, love this. So Linda says um, that her sister found this antique quilt top at Goodwill and asked her to quilt it. And um, she used her computer system and she's been afraid to try free motion. So she decided to do it with this quilt. And it's far from perfect, but it was so much fun. Thank you, Angela, for your inspiration. And so I'm noticing all kinds of, of lessons that we've done in the past about how to quilt hexes and how to travel. And um, uh, Linda just really kind of took a lot of those and ran with it. So good Good for you, Linda. I'm glad that you found um, uh, space to play in and you did a really great job. All right, um, uh, Edie, I'm not sure if it's Edie or Eddie, but take a look at all of the different designs that she put in this quilt top. She says, I hurried and made a scrappy Christmas couch throw for my daughter's uh, tree skirt. The quilting was so much fun. I couldn't find a Christmas tree or package from Angela, so I just made my own. And after finishing, I saw a tree that Angela did. Mine are different but easy. My pictures are never the best, so outer border was Angela's twinkle lights. Second border was trees, quilt body, packages with bows. So much fun. Um, so I want to say if you have signed up for um, our uh, holiday free motion um, worksheets, and you can do that on the uh, main page at quiltajoy.com. If you scroll down near the bottom, you can sign up for that. And then you get those holiday design worksheets in your inbox each day for like, I think it's like a seven to 10 days. You have a different one each day. And so that's where you'll get the twinkle lights and that's where you'll get the um, packages and that's where you'll get the um, tree. And we have all kinds of fun things tucked into that series of worksheets that you can get um, from the website. So um, I, I appreciate your time with me. I hope that you guys enjoyed um, all of those different quilts that were uh, shared there in the clubhouse. And I would love to see what you were working on as well. So um, don't forget, um, so next month we have on Wednesday, February the 2nd at one o'clock Eastern is our next um, Quilt of Joy Clubhouse. And we're gonna look at um, using rulers to kind of go around applique shapes and how that'll help you have control as you move around applique shapes. So be sure to um, uh, watch that. And then don't forget, we've got our Ask Me Anything on Wednesday, January the 19th at one o'clock Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific in the Quilt of Joy Clubhouse and on YouTube. Any other questions come through, Brad? All right, you guys, I hope that you have a wonderful January and I'll see you in a couple weeks in the Ask Me Anything.